Hello and welcome to Global Online. I am Chandni Swarnakar and I'm starting a new series from like from now where we'll cover all the PYQs and MCQs of, of CTET exam for English pedagogy. Okay, so this is my first lecture. We'll cover all the figure of speeches with explanations so that you must remember that it will help you. If you need any help, you can contact here. So without wasting our time, let's jump into the question. So the first question and example of a metaphor is, so you need to understand here what do you mean by a metaphor. Then before understanding metaphor, you must understand what is figure of speech. So figure of speech is a creative use of language, okay, to generate an effect. It also uh, can be classified or defined as to embellish a language when we use some uh, methods and uh, criteria to look uh, to make a language better uh, that is called figure of speech okay so now metaphor metaphor is uh, uh, actually talks about comparison two different things about comparison between two different things but in an indirect comparison without the use of like or as as similarly use like or as to compare two different things but where we talk about metaphor it does not include like or as there is also one thing that you must remember that exaggeration is also there. Metaphor, um, when a writer uses metaphor, sometimes it exaggerates. You uh, didn't mean like that, but you are actually exaggerating to make it sound better, to look better. Okay. There is also a depth of language in uh, metaphor, the concept of depth of language. It also helps to add depth and deep meaning to a language okay so the questions uh, has four options as usually it has so the first option if you research upon the ground it's an incomplete sentence that cannot be the answer option d i want to be it's an incomplete um, answer option between the cent miles it's, it is also an incomplete sentence and the second one will be the right answer. Why? Because I'll become the grass. There is a comparison without like or as. And there is also a depth to the language, to the sentence. Okay. So that is metaphor. Let's jump uh, into the second question. The poetic device used in the line, the sparkle like the ocean waves is an example of. So I told you about simile that there must be a comparison between two, three, uh, two things, different things. But there is a comparison with the help of like or as. Okay. So that is a simile. So there is a comparison between two different things and there is a use of like or as. So the correct answer will be definitely C. Right. Then exaggeration, I told you that it is a part of metaphor and it's not a figure of speech. So, cancel. Hyperbole, when you use hyperbole, it's a way of speaking or writing that makes something sound better. Okay, so to make it more exciting, to make it more dangerous, hyperbole has been used by the writer and also by general people. Then allegory is actually uh, when you are writing something, you have something, uh, some meaning to the surface and you have some meanings in the depth. You have to go deep into it. So that is allegory when a surface, uh, surface sentence having a hidden meaning. That is allegory. Okay. Second, I'm so sorry. Third, the figure of speech used in these lines, how... Soon hath time the subtle uh, thief of youth stolen on his wing my three and twentieth year. So here the person is complaining about time that how can he just uh, um, stole my twenty three years of life. Okay, so there is has means has of course here time is being uh, personified here as thief. So I told you that there is a comparison between time and a thief but there is a personification also what do you mean by personification when you um, giving non human behaviors human attributes human qualities non human objects or non human things that is personification so here time is considered as thief and it's a of course not a quality but it's an attribute to a th uh, human being okay so that is a personification i already told you so this is the correct answer you must remember i already told you a simile uh, about and i also told you about hyperbole so irony irony in a simple sense you have said something but you mean something else that is irony you just need to remember that fourth question 
which literary device has been used in hungry heart so hungry heart there is a consonant sound repetition right we have discussed simile there is uh, no comparison we have discussed irony there is no comparison to that so it would not be the answer then alliteration alliteration simply talks about a consonant sound repetition where you can see in a sentence that there is a com uh, consonant sound repetition that is allegory okay for example very famous uh, sorry alliteration a very famous alliteration uh, in a poem twinkle twinkle little star okay so you must have heard about it so a is the correct answer so now a uh, c option like we need to resonance basically means words having similar vowel sound when you can see in a sentence there is a uh, words having similar vowel sound repetition of a, a vowel sound that is resonance okay for now it's enough let's jump into the fifth question which figure of speech is used in the sentences the pen is mightier than the word of course it's not the sentence i'm so sorry the pen is mightier than the sword right so similarly we have discussed that there must be comparison direct so it will not be the answer personification there is no personification there is no hyperbole so metonymy is the correct answer but why what do you mean by metonymy metonymy basically use substitute word to related uh, word to it okay so for example the pen is basically substituting the writing word okay the whole writing process is uh, substituted by the pen right with the help of so it's a metonymy where you use substitute word related to it for example if you are saying uh, presidential administration behalf of using presidential administration you are using the white house that is an example of metonymy okay so you must remember that sixth question what type of figurative language is being used in the following sentence it's going to take a thousand years to finish all this homework i already told you so it's not a simile because there is no comparison with the help of like or as there is no comparison between uh, two th different uh, things with the help of like direct comparison also not there idiom is not a figure of speech that will not be the answer then hyperbole so what do you mean by hyperbole i already told you that it's a form of figurative language that goes beyond uh, is literal what you have actually literally written you didn't mean it but you are actually uh, written to make it look good or to sound better than it actually is okay it also create comic or dramatic effect okay it uh, helps to create a uh, comic or dramatic effect for example uh, except this one i'll tell you i am so hungry i could eat a horse so you cannot literally eat a horse but you are emphasizing that okay i am very hungry right so uh, it actually um, make the sentence look much better without like except uh, the fact that it can it could have been written in a simple uh, sentence i am very hungry okay but you have used that i am so hungry i could eat a horse seventh question the figure of speech used in the lines and on a day we meet to walk the line and set the wall between us once again there is a two different ideas altogether you are meaning something you are saying something but you mean something else you did you met uh, to do something but you did something else so this is an example of irony personification cannot be the answer because there is no personification metaphor cannot be the answer simile cannot be the answer so irony is the correct answer because there is a, a line where you are saying something the writer is saying something else but you doing something else mean something else okay next question identify the name of the literary device used in the line so boy don't you turn back so what is happening with this line there is a repetition of a vowel sound okay there is a repetition of a vowel sound so i must tell you that it's an example of what we have already discussed this that words having similar vowel sound that is assonance so assonance will be the right answer and for example chips and dips there is a vowel sound chips and dips okay repetition and also do good have good there is a repetition of a vowel sound so that is assonance 
hyperbole you knew, know it irony simile we have already discussed so the next question the shore of a locky gill has been referred to as fatal shore the poetic device used here is fatal means dangerous or likely to die or death right so metaphor cannot be the answer because shore of locky gill has been referred to as fatal shore so there is no comparison there is only a, a substitute word has been used here so simile cannot be the answer onomatopoeia what do you mean by onomatopoeia onomatopoeia basically words you can hear a sound from like splash boom you can hear it right boom splash buzz so this is not the correct answer transfer epithet is the correct answer okay so transfer epithet basically means is when an adjective usually used to describe one thing that is called a uh, transferred epithet okay so you actually using an adjective to describe one particular thing so here shore of locky gill is uh, uh, like referred to or described by fatal shore okay so it's an adjective fatal is an adjective okay so this will be the correct answer 10th question the figure of speech used in the line it walks on the water and whirls the meals what do you mean by whirls it means circle circle okay so synonym can be many so it's not a simile it's not a personification it's not onomatopoeia because there is no sound right what right there is a sound whatever i'll tell you that cannot be right you should use your brain so onomatopoeia i told you there is a word and you can hear a word like a uh, word itself is you know, creating a sound so world the meals so it means circle so what meals what means do it do the same so onomatopoeia onomatopoeia is the correct answer okay and synecdoche what do you mean by synecdoche please tell me say uh, synecdoche basically uh, similar to transfer epithet but the thing is uh, that synecdoche uses a part of a whole thing to describe the whole thing for example if you are saying crown you actually referring to the prince okay or to the king so you are using a part of it part of the king but you are actually referring to the whole thing so that is called synecdoche right so we have done with our lecture first lecture we'll cover the next lecture and we'll cover so many other figure of speeches so let's meet in the uh, next lecture for now you can go through the lecture you can read it or uh, can re revise it and note it down somewhere okay thank you for today